It's fantastic to see you here at Collectomania today. How have you been enjoying it? I've had a really lovely day. It's been fantastic and I actually love this venue. So I'm sitting here looking outside. And I, I mean, admittedly, it's teeming with rain, but I mean, it's still outside and it's lovely. And there's green and it's great as opposed to grey hangar wall, which is what we normally get. And you get a bit of fresh air as well, don't there's you? A bit of fresh air, yeah. Very fresh today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it keeps us all alive and on our toes, doesn't it? And those bright eyes sparkling away, uh, <laughs> freezing cold, but fantastic. Now, of course, we've seen you this season in Game of Thrones in the first episode. Tell us a little bit about filming that scene. Well, I tell you the main thing about it was actually going to the location and the location because it was up on the Antrim coast. And we got up very early in the morning, obviously, to get there. And driving along the coast road with the sun rising over the Irish Sea and Scotland appearing in the distance, absolutely stunning and then this beautiful location up on the cliffs and then the lunch break we were uh, you know just sitting there eating lunch looking out across to the Mull of Kintar and Ailsa Craig and all that it was just gorgeous and the sea was blue it was absolutely stunning and a rather fun scene to film as well so that was a good day yeah very happy and working with you're working with Aidan Gillen on that one and Sophie Turner weren't you uh, as I've only worked with Aidan Gillen and Sophie Turner. And so that was just very nice. Yeah, no, great fun, great. And I'm a big admirer of both of them, yeah. And Aidan does some fascinating work too in Ireland, I know, yeah. And what's it like um, coming into such a big show that's got so many fans, it's so hyped as Game of Thrones, everyone seems to be constantly talking about, that has all these millions, it feels like sometimes, characters and different yeah. machinations and plot lines and subplots going on. And then you've got to come in as this character who has a, a few scenes. How do you kind of feel yourself, insert yourself in there? Well, you know, it's like any job. You get sent the script, you, you, you see what you're doing, and you go and do it. And sometimes you're on a great big blockbuster movie with Meryl Streep. Sometimes you're on, you know, something for E4 with a bunch of young guys you've never heard of, but who your children absolutely know everything about. And so coming on to Game of Thrones, yes, I was very aware what a huge series this was. It was the only thing my daughters were impressed that I was in, ever. And I've been acting for well over 30 years. And, um, and also when you actually go on the set in Belfast in particular, those huge sets, you realise that you're on a very serious production and it's fantastic. But as an actor, you just get on with it. You just do it. You know? Do you think we'll see your character again? Because, I mean, obviously they've moved on from the veil now, but things can yes, come around I, and go around. Again, I have... No idea. I am apparently on it again. I've been booked for you know, a couple more and I have no idea what I'm doing. For all I know, I'm going to have my head chopped off or I, I just don't know. And because I haven't actually read the books, um, uh, I, I will wait and see what happens to Lord Yon Royce or Yon Royce. So you mentioned you've contracted for two more episodes for Game of Thrones. Are we looking forward to seeing you in season six then? I assume it is season six. Because the last one we filmed season five. Therefore, it has to be season six. Um, yeah, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm told I'm wanted in July, and then I'm wanted in December. So I have no idea what that means. But I just can't wait to see what they've got for me. You know, fantastic. And two different times of year, so you could be very hot in July, oh, very yes, cold in so December. You're very, very hot in July. And in the amount of kit I wear on that show, I mean, the last... The first uh, scene I filmed there, Belfast was the hottest place in the United Kingdom that day. And I had so much stuff on, I can't tell you. I lost about a stone doing that one. And then, of course, doing the county entry in one, yeah, major sunburn because we're out all day. December could be very different, yeah. But there we are. Sounds like Game of Thrones could have a Game of Thrones diet, you know, with all the clothes you oh, wear yeah. filming oh, in July. Fantastic. No, just do lots of that. Suits me. Yeah. Eat as many Mars bars as I want. <laughs> now, you mentioned, of course, you could get the chop. We don't know. Um, if, if you did get the chop in Game of Thrones, how would you like to go? Because there have been some very dramatic deaths in all sorts of gruesome and terrible oh, ways. In battle on horseback, obviously, yes. 
possibly with an arrow in the eye, you know, something like that. I know it's been done before, but, you know. There's some honour as well going in battle, isn't there, I guess? Oh, I think so, yes. I don't want to go in my bath or something like that. It'd be boring, wouldn't it, you know? Keel over or something. Yeah, just sort of fall over. Yeah, oh, he's dead. There we are, move on, you know. No. Yeah, no, no, that'd be very, very disappointing, wouldn't it? I do get killed quite a lot, though. I've been shot and I've had a five iron buried in my skull. Oh my yeah, no, I get, it's funny that, yeah, there we go. What's the favourite death of yours that you've had on screen so far? I think actually my favourite was <laughs> in Midsummer Murders, five iron in the head, in a wood, with my youngest daughter watching and calling action, which was fantastic, and she thought it was fantastic. Me lying there on the forest floor, blood spilling out of my head. Loved it. Totally unbothered by that. <laughs> So she'd look forward to a great death for you on Game of Thrones then if she's a fan of that show. Oh, she'd like to see something pretty bloody and gruesome, yeah. That would do her. Now, um, obviously you've only had a little bit of interaction uh, on the show with Littlefinger's character, uh, Aidan Gillen's character, Littlefinger, but what did you make of him when you kind of were dealing with him? Littlefinger, that is. Yeah, it's quite interesting, actually, because I don't quite know yet what to make of him because I actually haven't had enough to do with him. And I'm sort of thinking, are you a ghastly little oik, really evil, or are you actually just a rather smooth operator? I don't know enough about him. So I am actually quite wary of him, you know, I don't quite know how to play him. Now, I don't know whether that's right for my character, but I have a suspicion it might be. <laughs> I don't quite know what Littlefinger's quite up to. I mean, when you get the scripts, do you, or your part, do you get kind of a certain amount of input from the, the director and maybe the other actors who are, um, who kind of have more of a, a larger part in the show and therefore know the arc and stuff like that? None at all. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Show up, say the lines, and you know, if I get them right, I assume that'll be fine and we'll move on. Or if I get them wrong, I assume I'll be, be told to do them again. And sometimes I sort of, I think sometimes I try to go a bit more comedic than they actually want me to. So I was told to cut out the comedy on one scene, so... So fair enough, I cut it out. Okay. Keep it straight. <laughs> yeah, I do what I'm told, you know. So, no, you, I mean, no, the input is, is whatever you need to have. Um, but the scenes are usually fairly clear. So it's not, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Tell me a little bit about what other people have been asking you today about your various roles you've had over the years, because, of course, as you said, you've been working for a number of years now in many different roles, haven't you? Yeah, uh, it's been lovely. I'm... Main thing here has been Game of Thrones, obviously. That's the biggest thing. Uh, that's very interesting, actually, because I've only just come into Game of Thrones, and it does change things. You know, that really kicks things up because it has such a huge viewing audience. Doctor Who, of course. I was in the Bring Back series with Christopher Eccleston, uh, which was very, very exciting to be in. That was great fun. That was lovely. A uh, little bit of Braveheart, and a lot of people come and ask me about Heartbeat, which was a TV series I was in for 18 years. But of course, this isn't exactly a Heartbeat convention, so, you know. For um, Doctor Who, I mean, what was, I mean, because obviously that was, you know, the new beginning, as it were, yeah. of Doctor Who, wasn't it? How exciting was it to be part of that? Was uh, it something you knew you liked as a kid? Or? Oh, yeah. No, as a kid, I mean, I was watching it in the 60s from behind the sofa like everyone else. And I always thought it was absolutely fantastic. And then, then it went through so many different iterations that, you know, I, I lost track of it. And then it disappeared altogether. And then suddenly we heard it was coming back with Chris Eccleston, who I think is a fabulous actor. And I got asked into audition and got the part. And was, I was absolutely thrilled because it was the Bring Back series. It was, you know, there was a huge amount of buzz about it. And so it was very exciting to be in a double episode too, which was fantastic. And it was a fun episode as well. No. What was it like being part on, uh, you know, playing the part on that set, being there for the first time? Well, you were aware that, I think we were all aware, it was all quite, um, it was new. In a strange way, although we all knew what we were doing, we also, none of us did quite know what we were doing. We probably didn't quite know what we had and how it was going to end up. You know, we knew what we felt it was like, but you never quite know what it's going to actually be like when it's finally put together. 
So you're always slightly working in the dark. But you know, we did it, and out it came, and, and they're still making it. So, you know, so something obviously worked. Yeah. What do you think about the latest doctor, Peter Capaldi? Well, I, I've, have I worked with Peter? Yes, I think I have. And again, another top, top flight actor. I've not seen his Doctor Who. I haven't watched Doctor Who myself since about 1968. So, um, uh, but I know Peter is absolutely, I mean, I think a superb choice. Got all that character. And such an intelligent actor, you know, brilliant, brilliant. I mean, you worked, of course, with uh, Christopher Eccleston, you said, and you thought he's a great actor he is. Yeah. I mean, what did you think when he decided to step away from the role? Well, I wasn't at all surprised, because that's Christopher all over. You know, he does it, and then he moves on. He's an actor of enormous integrity, and I think he just felt fantastic. Ten, what was it, ten episodes, I think it was. The time to go on. You know, that's what he does, and good for him, good for him. And what can we look forward to seeing from you next? Well, I don't know, next, uh, Game of Thrones, I hope, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm doing a little bit on E4, a comedy thing, for, which is very alternative, and um, I have no idea what that will be like, but there we go. And um, Father Brown is a daytime TV thing, which I've just finished filming one of those. Uh, detective mystery, rather fun, set in the 1950s in the Cotswolds. So you go and wander around the Cotswolds filming, fantastic. And a thing called Versailles, which is coming out, it's about the building of Versailles, uh, which looks quite interesting. It's a big uh, French, Canadian, Anglo production. So I don't know when that's coming out, but anyway, I did that earlier this year. Yeah. It's been lovely talking to you, Rupert. Thanks so much for your time today and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Lovely to see you.